I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we're going to stencil onto a double stranded sock blank. This is a stroll double stranded sock blank from Knit Picks. It is 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon and has two strands of yarn knit together. So whatever random technique we do with our stenciling project I'm going to try today, uh, we will when, it, when you unravel the yarn, you'll end up with like sibling skeins that are matched. So it doesn't matter what kind of asymmetry we have on the yarn, uh, you'll be able to have a match set for your finished project. In the past, I've used guar gum as a thickener and shown how when stenciling or just hand painting on a sock blank, the colors spread less than if you were just using dyes mixed with water. But what would happen if on our stencils, we just apply straight dye powder or even dye powder mixed with citric acid. Will we be able to see the shape when we move up the stencil? How heavy will I have to layer those colors? Will it work or will we just end up with some splotches? I don't know, but I'm curious to find out. Before I get back to our video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to today's lab partner, Suzanne Bailey Yin. Suze, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I cannot wait for you to see how this sock blank will turn out. We're going to go pre-soak a skein of stroll to have as a yarn mop. We're going to need something to sort of wipe up all this extra dye powder. And I'll go ahead and pre-soak the sock blank as well. For now, in plain tap water, but we'll probably add acid before we set everything else up. I have no idea how well this will or will not work. So, yeah, we're gonna give it a good shot and add like a good old splash of white vinegar to our pre-soak. And the yarn is pre-soaked for maybe about an hour. Uh, we could have added the acid into the pre-soak earlier, but it's not necessary. You can just have the acid in with the yarn for a short period of time uh, and then start dyeing it. But I wanted to add the glug of acid on camera. And so that's why I made this choice versus having acid in here at the very beginning today. <laughs> I always protect my work surface with a shower curtain, but I've added some plastic wrap on here today. So that way we can wrap up our blank after uh, we are satisfied with our color coverage. Now, the blank is a little bit saturated. This is so that way the dyes that we add will be able to uh, get saturated and sort of sink into the yarn. But because it, I could have squeezed more water out, it's possible that the colors are gonna spread a lot. So, but yeah, I mean, I can feel and squish some of that liquid. So, We'll see how this goes, and I will fix my camera angle. <laughs> That's better! I have a bunch of Dharma acid dyes mixed with some citric acid powder in these little jars. And we're going to start using these dyes for our stenciling today. The ratio of citric acid powder to acid dye is approximately 1 half teaspoon of citric acid to 1 32nd teaspoon of acid dye but some of them may have a little bit more. That's just approximately the ratio I used. And the citric acid in these jars was a mixture of like a finer milled and a chunkier milled citric acid. So that's something else that I want to note. But if I go through all this and I want more, I have some other colors uh, of dye mixed with citric, citric acid left over in my stash that we can pull from as well. Because sometimes the best way to experiment is to use materials that you already have on hand. I debated what stencil I wanted to use and ultimately decided to bring back this DNA pattern, which I don't think you can really see on camera right now. Okay, if I hold it in an angle, you can kind of see. Uh, and the reason why I picked this is because there's a lot of negative space on either side. And so I should hopefully be able to mop up the dye. But it is very, very likely that as I try to speckle into this little area, that dye is gonna fall outside of the stencil as well. So maybe I should try to like really stay towards the middle, but I'm gonna go put on my Deluxe Rubber Respirator Mask, safety glasses and gloves, and we'll start uh, trying to speckle. I also have a little paintbrush on hand in case I want to uh, sort of direct some of the powder back onto the spots where we want it to land, but we'll see how this goes. All right, let's start with, I don't know, a color. Oh, I forgot that these jars have little seals. That's nice and handy. 
Okay, so as I'm doing this, the dyes aren't really coming out very fast, which is good, but I can't entirely tell what's happening. <laughs> uh, let's do, I think this is some black. I can't entirely tell because some dye is absolutely landing uh, on the stencil itself and some is landing like beneath it. So it's hard to say where these colors are going. Right now it just kind of looks like a little bit of a mess. And I am curious, and I don't know how damp the stencil is currently. But I think I might take this paintbrush now. And kind of try to direct the powder onto the areas where we want it to go. And as I'm doing this, we are concentrating these colors more on the actual DNA. So this does seem to be working. I'm wiping the paintbrush off on the yarn mop. And honestly, I think I'm gonna to need to dry the paintbrush. Realizing if it's damp, that that like pixelated attempt may not work as well. But we'll see, let's do, I don't know what color this one is. Well, that one could be, I don't know, I have a lot of this pink. Certainly, we're getting a kind of cool colored effect. And we don't necessarily need to layer this many colors on each thing. When I'm trying to focus near some of these edges a little bit, but it's really hard for me to tell sort of what's going on where. Yeah, because I would also say that um, as I'm coming around, it's very, very clear that not everything is soaking in super well yet. Like, I can move a lot of stuff around. Bringing some more color on there. And I can tell that right there, I was absolutely patting it down. Which maybe would alter that sort of speckled state. Oh, I should have gone onto the yarn mop first before that paper towel. Okay, because right now, this is looking pretty darn good. Uh, there could be some areas where we're like, oh, could use a little more color. Just to kind of get out the shape. But again, it's hard to know for sure what's happening. Uh, because clearly I can see some of this DNA shape. And I'm debating whether I should try to move this now or if I should wait. And I'm only considering waiting because, uh, let's wait five minutes, okay? We'll compromise and do five minutes instead of like 10 or something because I want to give all of this powder a little bit of time to sink in before I lift up the stencil and move it and potentially sort of press on there and move things. But I mean, this is cool. All right, our moment of truth. I'm gonna pick this up carefully. I'm gonna just set it down on the yarn mop. And I mean, it's not perfect, but it is a super cool effect. I don't know if things are gonna spread a lot more 
once we wrap this, if we layer the stencil on top a little bit to get uh, some DNA at another angle. But this is so cool. Uh, this multicolored effect that we have in here is beautiful. And we're going to end up with speckles in the finished yarn because it's a blank and the way that all works. So I am very, very intrigued. And here I did get some over speckle where it went over the edge, but I also don't mind that. All right, I just laid the stencil down so our next strand of DNA can be sort of right here. Uh, and we'll see how this goes. Uh, I, I, since I, the camera wasn't actually recording, I don't want to lift it up and put it down again because I don't know if we're going to smudge our original DNA at all. But hopefully not. And I will bring in some of the other colors that we have. Oh, I always forgot about these inserts. Uh, and so there could be some muddiness that starts to happen because we do still have some of the original colors on here. But I am noticing something because of the edge of the blank. Uh, this is raised a little bit, and so it's possible we're going to lose some definition as we get down there. So I'm attempting to hold it down. I don't know how well that may or may not work, and I'm kind of giving up because I'm afraid I'm going to shift it. Do some yellow, maybe along like half. I don't know what color this one is. Maybe this is the other blue. Or is this the black? This might be the black. I thought I'd use black earlier, but maybe not. Okay, and I'm gonna come with our brush because one thing that immediately is hard is when you can see the color on sort of the negative space lines and so then we kind of want to knock that off and knock that in between a little bit actually this seems to be working pretty well. And I think that that first color I had was definitely sea spray and not black <laughs> because this color feels black. And I mean, I can kind of tap things down. So it is still technically working. I just don't entirely know how well. <laughs> oh man. Oh man, I'm curious. I can't decide if I should like wait. Uh, I don't really want to wait. I think I want to pick it up. Okay, you know what? That did work pretty well. That works better than I thought, and I don't think it blurred things over there. So that is actually really, really good. And now we're going to continue. Maybe this is red, maybe this is purple. I don't know, but I think at this point, I'm going to, oh, maybe that's pink. I think at this point, I'm gonna speed things up uh, and we're gonna try to use up as much of these powders as I can. And I do have a plan, which hopefully won't ruin any of our stencils, but I do have a little plan of some things to do for the negative space rather than over dyeing it. I think that we can come and add just some speckles, sort of splotches in some of those areas. Cause we do have some over speckling that's happening already. As I added these final stenciled DNA strands onto the sock link, I was just 
so happy and a little bit floored that this was continuing to work as well as it did. I think the first one, the first stencil is still probably the best. Uh, and so maybe having let it sit before removing it and sort of placing it elsewhere is possibly the thing to do. But this is still so super fun. And of course, we will have to wait and see how much colors will move as we go and steam set this. Because there is a possibility that things might move around a fair amount, and that could be bad. But now I'm having a very big debate with myself about if I want to add more speckles sort of in that big negative space around the strands. And I'm considering yes, because I think that will sort of pull things together a little bit. But I'm also a little unsure. But I think I want to do that. Hopefully I don't regret that. I am going to add some speckles around and I'm starting with the yellow just so that way these larger areas of some negative space have some more interest to them and if some of this lands on top of any of the stencils it shouldn't destroy some of that but I'm going to be very careful in here and along these edges. Uh, and I think I can do some pink too. With the pink, I'm being even like more, I'm doing less of the pink than I did the yellow. But I think I'm trying to blend in some of these over sprays a little bit. And just bring a little more color in. See, the thing is, I can't tell the difference between the sea spray and the black right now. But whichever one this is, I'm being super, super light. Again, to just bring in a little bit of something else. And what are you? You're probably some purple. May as well use you up. Come on. Some of those last big granules are hard to get out of the shaker. Uh, and I know that I think visually that doesn't look like very much. But we did add a little bit of confetti to this backdrop. And it's still going to be negative space, but it will be breaking up some of that white a little bit. And so it makes it a little bit more like a little party. And so I like that. But now I want to let everything sit for at least five minutes before we come and roll it up. But while we wait, we may as well take a little bit of a closer look at some of our areas. Here you can see one of our more confetti sections and one of our other DNA strands. Super cute! All right, and now I'm going to just fold these plastic wrap edges over. The nice thing is that even though our blanks are wet, uh, there should not be a lot of color leakage out of here necessarily. Um, but there could still be a little bit of, oh dear, transfer. All right. As I start to wrap this, I'm starting small because I did not have a ton of overlap. But I can make the roll larger. Ooh! I'm impressed by how much those colors have gone through to the other side. Uh, but now I'm going to go place this in a steamer basket and steam set for 30 minutes. And as for our yarn mop, ooh, we got some color off of the stencil actually. Um, I was gonna say we didn't get very much color on it, but I don't wanna destroy the stencil. I have a feeling that this mop, I will end up over dyeing uh, because it's just not a lot on there. We may as well pick up what we got, and I'm also gonna just stick this in the steamer basket, but I don't think it's done. I think it needs something else. It has been 30 minutes, and 
I cannot see through and tell because we're looking at the wrong side anyway to know how much definition we will or will not have in our yarn. Um, I, I think I'm going to leave things here to cool with the lid off. Uh, actually, no. Since I wasn't going to be able to wash things for a while, that's why I considered leaving things here. But sometimes these jelly rolls take a little bit longer to cool. But it does look like we probably still have some DNA definition, which is great. So I'm going to go set this aside to let it cool completely before we wash it. And we'll take a look at our sock link. Let's wash our yarn. And we've got our yarn mop, who isn't ugly. There's just, it could have more color. Uh, maybe I'll take some, I'll use it for leaving a dye behind later. But, ooh, okay, let's see. I mean, I think I still see our DNA. It's hard when you're dyeing a sock blank also because, ooh, yeah, you totally still see it. Uh, because the sock blanks get blocked uh, and the stitches can move. So some of it, sometimes losing detail isn't because the the dyes themselves are spreading, but it's because the yarn is moving in relationship to the other stitches. But I still see our DNA, especially from far away. And I'm really enjoying this like super multicolored, variegated uh, coloration that we have. That's super, super fun. And the best part is there's no color bleeding. Uh, so, how does this compare to using guar gum? Well, I mean, it's different. And we used dye mixed with citric acid and got something quite variegated here. Uh, we got good coverage with our speckles um, over the stencils, but there's still, like, we got a lot of different colors in there by design. Now, if you were doing, oh good, and I'm not seeing any color bleeding. Uh, as we add soap. Uh, if you were to do this with straight dye powder, you could conceivably add your powder as long as you're being really light and get more solid coverage over the stencil in that area. It's just if things are too wet or you add too much dye, then it might wick out and spread out. So some colors I might recommend doing this kind of application with are colors that you know break. Uh, like purple pop, for instance. Those blues strike really fast, and so those will stay like more where you place them, and if colors spread, it'll be like a pink halo, which could be really pretty and fun. But anyway, do you want to see me play around with this more? Let me know down in the comments below. And I'm going to finish rinsing out the soap, and then I'm going to put all the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry so we can see what the finished yarn looks like. Here is the finished blink, and from far away, I feel like you see the double helix pattern so well. Whenever you're going to stencil on a sock blank, some amount of detail is going to be lost, because as you wash the blank and let it dry, the yarn will shift a little bit. That's going to blur the design somewhat, but this worked so well. I think that the dyes mixed with citric acid just really sunk in and stayed where we placed them, even though we played with a variety of different colors. And as long as the features are overall on the bigger side, this has the potential uh, as not only a great way to use up dyes that were already mixed with citric acid, but just as a way to stencil in general, because I enjoyed this uh, shaking the dyes onto the stencil more than I like filling my misto with <laughs> with acid dyes and spraying on a stencil. That's much more nerve-wracking. Now where I come in on shaking speckles onto a stencil versus using a foam brush and quar gum, there I don't know. But the variegated feel that we have on each of these DNA stenciled areas is gorgeous. Some of the features worked out a little better than others. Maybe it's some of the use of the yellow, which doesn't have a lot of contrast with the background in this particular one, and maybe because it was at the edge and I didn't have the stencil down as hard, uh, and maybe I got a little bit sloppier <laughs> as well. But 
I think given the rest of what we have in the area, you can still see that stencil there. But the best one, I think, the best precision and sort of like sharpness of the boundaries definitely happened with the first one because this one also is a little bit blurry, same here. But overall, this turned out so well. I'm really happy I added some additional speckles onto the background area. I hate leaving tons of negative space. This pulls the whole project together a little bit and it covers up some of my misfires <laughs> as well. One of the things that surprised me the most from this overall technique is how little color we have in our yarn mop. Uh, almost all of the color that we had ended up on the sock blank and there wasn't a lot of extra to wipe up. And so I will be over dyeing this yarn mop in a new video. Actually, the Chemnitz patrons will get behind the scenes access as I'm filming the dyeing portion of that video. I try to film at least one behind the scenes live stream for patrons at the wool level and higher. Uh, and yeah, they get to see what I'm working on, see an unedited version if I have to do multiple takes of something or what. And it's fun. Uh, you can learn more about that over at the Chemnitz Patreon, which is patreon.com slash Chemnitz. Suze, I am so excited to send you this fun DNA speckly sock blank. Thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. If you would like to learn more how you can become a lab partner like Suze, uh, go and check out the listings that I have linked down in the video description to the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. Suzanne Bailey Yin, thank you again for being my lab partner. This pattern even looks fun when I scrunch it up. I am not going to unravel this blank in this video. Uh, typically, when you look at a blank, you can get a little bit of a feel of what might happen. In this one, here you can see we're gonna have some like white and then get more and more of these colored speckles. But then the colors will sort of transition with more purple, more blue and then more red as we go through. But if we take a closer look at some of these stitches, and if I pull the fabric apart a bit, these are gonna be areas of speckles. Uh, and so they are not solid color that go all the way through, even though there is some color all the way on the wrong side, we're still gonna have speckles from the resist of the stitches. It's just the colors will shift and move throughout time and it's going to be a very lovely and unique yarn. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I really hope that you have enjoyed today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. This was such a fun little experiment that had really great results and I'm so excited to play around with this more in the future. And I might even be 3D printing some stencils in the future. Well, Keith's gonna do the 3D printing, but I found them or I can design them <laughs> and then ask him to help me print it. Please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching.